So today it's a really super chatty, I think it will be, because I have a lot to tell you. A very super chatty get ready with me. I have nothing planned for the day. I'm going to, in the next day or so, uh, bring down all of my, or take down all of my fall decorations and get ready to start decorating for Christmas. So my plan is to get it done mainly today and then probably tomorrow, Saturday, I'm actually gonna have Jim bring the tree in and put it in place. We had to buy a new tree this year so that I can at least start decorating there. But today, it's gonna be a super, super chatty get ready with me. Now, bear in mind, this is not a tutorial. It is strictly uh, me talking and putting on makeup. I will list every single thing I use down in the description box or the show more box. So I'm not going to be going into any detail or really chatting about anything that I'm actually putting on my face. Maybe a couple of things now that I think about it. And so, so don't say in the comments, you were too fast putting on your makeup. No, I'm not. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is just chatty what's going on in my life right now. So I have done some serious moisturizing on my face uh, this morning because I'm going to use, I am going to use the IT Celebration Foundation, which is a powder foundation. So I'm going to use that. So I really did a lot of extra moisturizing because I need that when I use a powder foundation. Um, so, uh, and then the next thing I want to tell you is I have a, a box right here beside me that I'm keeping. And this, these are some concealers that I am trying my best to either like them enough to use them up or go ahead and throw them away. Uh, they've just been in my little stash for way too long. Yesterday, I pulled this one out that I have not used in probably three or four years. It is the Dior Skin Nude. And, and I tell you, the writing on it is so, well, here, let me, do y'all have one of these? It's a light. I don't know if you can see, there you go. It's a magnifying glass, but it's a light. And even with my good eyes, there are some things I still cannot see. But this is anti-A-N-T-I-C-E-R-N-E-S. I'm not sure what that means. Perfector Hydrant. Skin Perfecting Hydrating Concealer. And it's by Dior. And the color is 002. And it says beige slice beige. Would you look at this? You're not going to believe what this does. I, this tube is almost full. I, I can't remember the last time I used this. I know it got stuck somewhere in the bottom of my uh, little drawer. And what can I say? I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's in a tube. And I'm going to use this little, ooh, it's sort of dirty. Uh, has smudges this little glass plate to put some out on and that may be too much we'll see but I am loving this and I tell you how much I love it is I um, I went on Sephora earlier this morning just to see if they still if it they even still made it Dior and they don't but uh, I love the color. I love the coverage. So I'm going to start and just right there. But uh, so that's the first thing that I'm using that's different. And if I can, we have a Sephora here and an Ulta, but I. I don't know if they carry Dior. So when I went on the Dior website, I saw one that I thought might be a dupe. And you know, when you go on Sephora, you can actually, 
you can actually chat with someone who can help you. And she did not know, uh, I'm going to need some more. She did not know if what replaced this and what we thought might replace it, it beige was not a color. I did find this on eBay. But the thing is, I know it's old. But I mean, this, this stuff, I'm getting those sunspots. I really like it. I red nose, but you know, I blow my nose constantly, so. So anyway, that's that, and I'm loving it. And if I can find something, I'll probably list it below, but if I can find something that um, comes anywhere close to it, I'll let you know. Also, I, for those of you who have been watching me for any length of time, you know that I have used the dupe, or one of the dupes, for Neutrogena eye makeup remover for literally years. By the way, you can see I have really hit pan in this, and I have another one. But um, I've been using the dupe, and because they're just cheaper. And there's a dupe, Walmart has a dupe, CVS has a dupe, Target has a dupe, a lot of dupes for it. And so I was almost out and did I say it was the dupe for Neutrogena? I love it. I just love it. I've always loved it. That's why I've stuck with it. I don't have to rub and tug and on my eyes or my eyelids, and it takes everything off. But I've, I've just, I, I'll, I just like it. I, I was almost out. I went to my um, closest CVS was the first store closest to me and they were out of it. They did not even have the Neutrogena. So there's a Walgreens right across the street. I thought, I don't wanna mess with this. I'm just gonna go in Walgreens and buy the Neutrogena. I wasn't in the mood to get out that day. And it was recently, like one day last week. So I went in Walgreens with the intention of buying just the Neutrogena, and would you believe they were out of it? So I thought, well, I'll go to Walmart. And I went to Walmart. They were out of it. That, and not, not only did they not have their brand, well, they, they didn't have any brand. They didn't have the off brands. Nobody had the Neutrogena, not even Walmart. So that was not good. So I thought, okay, I've got to do something. I'm in Walmart, I've got to do something. So I started looking, thinking, okay, what can I use instead? So nothing. I, I looked and I looked and I looked and I couldn't find just anything. I, I did see some Pond's cold cream. Their shelves were almost empty everywhere in the cosmetics. And this Walmart is a super center. A very large cosmetic section. So, I finally came across the Garnier. And the Garnier was um, there were three different ones, the micellar water, and I started reading uh, 
the they have three different colored tops. I want to say the bl a blue, maybe a pink, and a green. I'm not sure, but but the blue top said that the micellar cleansing water, all in one waterproof, removes makeup, even waterproof mascara, plus cleans and soothes. No rinse, no harsh rubbing. Face, lips, eyes, all skin types, even sensitive. So, this is this. And it was, this is seven fluid ounces. Look at this. So, I thought, well, you know, I can remember back years ago when the micellar waters were beginning to be popular. I tried some, a couple of them, and thinking they would work on my eyes, and they just didn't. They didn't at all. So, you know, that was that. I thought I tried the Garnier. I probably tried one of the others. But, uh, so I bought that out of desperation. And it was very inexpensive. It was just, I don't remember, I want to say around seven or eight dollars. And so that night, I came home and I thought, well, all right, here we go. So I shook it up and took a cotton pad and put some on it like I normally do, held it over the one eye, and I mean, I sort of swiped it off and it was like everything went off, everything. Flipped it over, did the other eye, totally everything removed. I always take my cotton pad, let me grab one here. I always take my cotton pad after I've used it to do this and I fold it over and I go up under my eyes and I get the underneath some of my lashes and my lower lashes. So I did that, gone. Every speck of eye makeup that I had on, mascara, you name it. And I couldn't believe it. I want to say that was seven or no, I take it back. I think it was eleven dollars for at Walmart for again just seven ounces, and I couldn't believe it. The equate, even the equate is, you know, maybe around five dollars for for two ounces, maybe so. That was, I'm loving it. I, I'll, in fact, I think I like it better. I think it does a better job than the Neutrogena or any of the dupes. So, I think that's gonna be my new favorite. My new favorite. Um, makeup remover. I love it. And so far, so good with it. I, I, and again, I think the reason I didn't like the one I tried before was because I did not get the one with the blue top. I tell you, y'all know I've been using that Revital Lash. That stuff is so expensive. But I finally broke down and I, I've been really faithful with using it every day or every night. And I've been using that tube for almost a year and I finally broke, broke down and bought a new one. And I still haven't opened it. So that, you know, it was around $150. But if that lasted me for a whole year and, and my lashes, my, I mean, my lashes aren't super long, but they are so much longer than they have been for many, 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 many years. I think Tammy mentioned that her lashes get so long that they hit her eyebrows, and they are long, trust me. She has to cut them or trim them. They get so long from using that, and mine don't. I will say mine have never gotten that long, but not only have they gotten long, they've gotten 
even curlier than they were before. I've never had to curl my lashes. Okay, I'm looking down at my list. Um, did y'all, oh, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I, and I have a question for you and I really and truly do need your input on this. You know, I, I've been going to the dentist uh, here recently. I've, I, I'm 78 years old. I have a, you know, I have a mouthful of, of crowns. I have no bridges, no partials, but I have a lot of crowns. And I've got to blow my nose. Hold on. I have a mouthful of crowns. I don't have a mouthful, I have a few. And they're old, they're all super old. And about just a few weeks ago, when I was brushing my teeth one morning, I felt it was a little tender right here. And I looked at my gum and there was like a little pimple. And I thought, well, what is that? It was a little bit tender, but a pimple. And so I sort of watched it for a couple of days and had Jim look at it. And I, I, both of us sort of thought, maybe that's an abscess. Had an old, had a crown there. Started saying old crown. It wasn't an old crown. But uh, it was a crown. And I, after a couple of days, it didn't go away. I... I had to find a dentist because we that was one thing we hadn't done yet is we hadn't found a dentist so i called one of my neighbors that i've gotten to know and the over the years they've used three or four dentists between the he and his wife and so they gave me the names and i started with the one that they're using now that they highly recommended and um, blush or bronzer and they were not taking new patients so I started going down the list no one was taking new patients so finally the last one on the list I asked do you have anyone that you're referring to and they said Act actually we do and they gave me the name of someone and I called and you know, because I wasn't in pain, they were able to uh, give me an appointment for a few days and later and just told me that if it, if I, for some reason, you know, felt pain, to give them a call and they would figure out how to work me in. And it, that never happened. So I was all good. But when I did go in, he looked at it and did an x-ray and he said, you know, I don't know, just don't see anything. And it was, uh, as I said, that tooth, we were pretty sure. Uh, and the thing about that tooth is, uh, it was at least 10 years ago, it was after Jim and I got married and I moved up to the northern part of Arkansas to we were gonna live in his house. And I had trouble, uh, I had a toothache one day and he, I went to his dentist and I needed a root canal, so he did a root canal on it. And, And when he went to put, the, and I was gonna need a crown, so when he went to put the crown on it, he had problems getting the crown to fit. It just didn't want to fit. And even went so far as he put it up at temporary own and had it, we had it remade. And even when that one came back, it was the same thing. It just, it was like it could never fit properly. I, I just couldn't, I, it didn't bother me, but I, when I, flossed it was just I just couldn't floss really well in between it so we moved to Florida you know I just found a dentist down here and I was going for my checkup you know 
the things you normally do with your dentist, um, checkups and cleanings and all that type of thing. But five years ago, I started having trouble with that tooth. So I went to the dentist there where we were in Panama City Beach and my dentist and he looked at it and said, you know what, you need a new, you need a root canal, another root canal, which I'd never, that had never happened to me before where I've had to have two root canals on the same tooth, but you know, and of course it meant a new crown. But I said, well, okay, what do you do? And he put a new crown, did the root canal, put a crown on it. And I told him about the first story about how hard it was to, you know, to get that crown uh, to fit properly. And so, would you believe he had the same trouble with it? it? I don't know if it was the shape of my tooth or my tooth was, I don't know. But, oh, here, that's what I need. But uh, he had a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble with it. Finally got it where we wanted it. I think we had to remake that one too. This was that same tooth that we've had trouble. I've had two root canals and two crowns. So my new dentist here, I really like him. He, uh, I, I called him and I said, you know, he said just to keep an eye on it when I went that first time. And I did, uh, and sure enough, he said, let me know if the little bump doesn't go away. He said, let's give it another week or so. And if the bump goes away, then we're not gonna worry about it. Well, it didn't go away. So I called him and we, I went back in. He x-rayed it again and he did something. I, I'm not real sure what it was, but he inserted some kind of a little pin. He was concerned that maybe we were even not looking at the same, at the right tooth. So he inserted some kind of a little pin in my gum that went along and then he x-rayed. And sure enough, it was that tooth. So he told me it was sort of weird and he was just gonna go ahead and send me to an endodontist that he knew that I needed another root canal. He could tell. And I, you know, I said, I've had two. And he said, well, he said, I, honestly, he said, I'm gonna tell you something. He said, this guy's good. And he said, if he can uh, save that crown, he'll save the crown. He can drill through the crown. He'll fill the crown back up, or, or I will, I think he said. And that'll be it. So, made an appointment. Oh, and, and he put me on a round of antibiotics. So I got the appointment with the endodontist. And <laughs> I go over for the appointment and the other day and the, his assistant came in. Well, I went for the consultation first and he looked at it and he said, yeah. He said, they did those, the x-ray that goes around your head and then they did just an isolated one. And he said, I, he said, I sort of think I can save that tooth. He said, it looks, he said, I can't guarantee it, but it looks like I can. So he said, we're going to proceed with that. And he said, if not, the tooth will have to come out. So I went back like a week later for the actual root canal, which was a couple of days ago. And his assistant, of course, was in there first getting me ready. And she said, we're gonna get you really, really numb. You're gonna like it. And I went, oh, okay. And then when he came in, he said, I'm gonna get you really, really numb. I said, okay. And I mean, there were a lot of, of course I didn't feel anything, you know, but there were a lot of little pricks and, and he, he, he walked out of the room. He said, I'll be back. I'll be right back. I'm going to let that settle for just a minute. And in a couple of minutes, he came back in and he started and he started doing them on the inside again, numbing. And I'm going, wow. 
So anyway, he let that sit for a couple of minutes and he started. And he was not, had not started, but about, I don't know, four or five minutes, maybe not even that long. And he had one of those, it was really this microscope that would all, like look down that he was looking through and it would look down, I guess, into the tooth. And he stopped and he said, I've got some bad news. He said, we, now I know what's wrong with that tooth. And he said, your whole tooth is cracked. The root of the tooth is cracked. And he said, there's no, he said, it's probably caused from the crown not fitting properly. It was, you know, that it's just, who, who knows whose fault it is, but, but he said, you are so numb right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out here. I'm gonna call your dentist and I'm gonna see if they can work you in right now to take that tooth out while you are so numb. He said, and, and the dentist was only about five minutes away. So he said, I'm, call, I'm calling him right now. So he came right back in and he said, you, you know, get over there as quick as you can. They're gonna work you in. So I went out, to pay, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, I've got to pay for a root canal and they're going to take that tooth out. So I went around and when I had gone for the consultation, she told me, she said, listen, if you pay, I paid by credit card for that one, but she said, if you pay by check, a personal check, it'll be 3% less. So I made sure and took a check with me. So I was gonna pay and she said, oh, by the way, she said, we're not gonna charge you for a root canal. And they charged me just for what they did, which was not very much at all. But I started to write the check and I couldn't write. So my hand was shaking so much that I couldn't write the check out. And she said, just, just sign the check, I'll fill it out and I will hand it to you and you approve it and then I'll accept it back. So we did that. I was able to get my name on there some way. I don't know how. And it was right. So I left and headed straight. And, and I was totally, I mean, I felt, other than my hand shaking, and I felt a little jittery, which could have been my blood pressure, I suppose. But I was fine. I mean, I was fine to drive. I'd gone by myself. Jim was on the golf course. He had asked me if, I wanted him to go with me, and I, uh, I said, no, I'm fine. I've had root canals done before by myself. So he went to play golf, So and I was fine driving. And I got in, and they put took me right in, and he said, I know you're really dead. He said, but I'm going to poke around a little bit, and if you feel anything at all, oh, well, let me go back. The When I was paying, and I couldn't sign my name or write the check, the the office manager was actually who was taking my money and she said when I said I couldn't I was shaking she said oh that's the that stuff is good and she called it by a name and I didn't pay attention to her but anyway when I got over to my dentist and he started you know he said I'm gonna poke around and make sure if you feel anything at all other than pressure you tell me and he did and I didn't so I mean he went in there and he had that tooth out in about 30 seconds. So, but anyway, he told me, he said, let's talk for a little minute about your options. He said, he, he brought out the little, you know, set of teeth, clear plastic or acrylic, and he showed me what, and he told me about an implant, showed me what it looked like, and told me about the process or the procedure for that, and the time frame, and the cost. Whoo! And, and I don't know about, and I'm sure it's probably different in different parts of the country, but the implant with everything all said and done was $4,000 for one tooth. I knew they were expensive. I, I had heard they were expensive. So then he showed me a bridge and, explain, and a partial and explained the difference in the two of them. And the bridge was almost as, as expensive as the implant, but the thing about a bridge is that they're permanent too. They're actually cemented on. They have to take, uh, put a crown on the two side teeth to put that in there, but it's permanent. Then the partial, of course, or I, did, I didn't really understand the difference because I'd never had to deal with that, but the partial is removable. You have to take it out at night. 
and it was quite a bit less. The bridge was 3,500 all said and done. The the partial was only, I think he said 1,300. So, I mean, I'm thinking immediately, listen, it's this tooth, it's not seen. I can take that tooth, I can take that out every night if I have to. And then I got to thinking about it after I got home. I told Jim, I'm scared to death, I'll swallow it. I would swallow that thing eating, you know. I, I don't know, so I am, I don't know what to do. So here's what I'm asking you. If you have any experience with an implant or a partial or a bridge, what did you do? Do you like it? Would you do anything different? I have, this has to heal before we do anything. So I have until December the 29th to make a decision about what I'm gonna do about it. But that's the first time they can really get me in it after it heals. Now I know the I know the implant. Once they put the titanium post in, an oral surgeon has to do that, and that will take. He I think he said four months for the healing for the bone to graft back around it, and so you know that is a long procedure. Uh, a bridge or a partial would not be. So what what if you've had a situation like this? What did you do? What's your experience? Did you, what, are you pleased with it? Have you ever swallowed a, par, a one tooth partial? It would connect also, I think, on the two teeth on either side of it. So I don't know what to do. I don't know. I just don't want to swallow it. Don't have a problem with taking it out every night. I just don't want to swallow it. I have a fear of that. So that would certainly be the cheapest way to go. Oh, and I have to tell you, I, he told me, the dentist told me when he pulled it, he said, you're going to be numb for a while. He said, I'm not going to write you a pain prescription. But he said, I want you to go home and I want you to take 600 milligrams of ibuprofen and then take it 600 milligrams every six hours as long as you need it. Don't take it if you don't need it. He said at the end of th the three-hour period in there, if you think you need something, take a Tylenol and that will help. So I... As soon as I got home, I sent Jim a text, and, I, and of course, you've got to have to eat soft foods and all that, you know, the whole thing, I guess. I'm learning. And so I texted Jim to stop, and would he stop and get me some, like, tomato soup? And he came right back and said yes. I laid down on the couch, and 30 minutes later, I woke up. And it was not like I'd been in a real hard sleep. It was just... It was just peaceful. That's the only way. It was like a twilight, I guess. And I got up and walked around for a minute, not dizzy, nothing. I was like that all afternoon. I virtually, by six o'clock, I, when I would change, I was supposed to change that packing every hour. I had no blood whatsoever the last two times I changed it. So. That was that, I mean, that was easy. And I ate my little soup and was real careful not to get anything over here and not told me not to brush my teeth for, gave me a time frame on that. I have had no pain whatsoever. So that's my dentist experience. And I, again, if you will, I know I've said this twice already, I think, but let me know. It's because I've got to make a decision about this. Okay, I'm looking down at my notes. Oh, this is too funny. This happened yesterday. Had to go to TJ Maxx to return something. And I was in uh, the line. I got it, uh, got the item returned. Jim went with me. And he said, I'm going to go back and look at some long sleeve t shirts or long sleeve shirts that I can golf in with, when the days are cool. So he was back there and so went back after I got my money and he had found some things. So I said, well, I'll stand in line. And he went and what he said, I'll wait for you at the door. So there were about, normally at this TJ Maxx, they have several people, several cashiers working all the time. You never have to wait. There may be 10 or 15 people in front of you, but it goes real fast. Well, there was about 10 people in front of me, but they only had three cash registers open. And I, it was forever. So I'm standing there, and I had looked, you know, how you look at what's around you. 
and this there was this man behind me. Now I had a basket, and he didn't. And uh, so he was right right at me, and he didn't have a mask on. I did, and all of a sudden he starts talking to me, and he said. He had, a, he had a pack of the dog uh, uh, bags, the potty bags. And he said, how did they know that I needed these and I'd forgotten about it? And I said, well, you know, somebody, they've got everything here. So they always know that if you're standing in line, you're probably going to pick something up and add it to your basket. And he said, I know, I know. And so I turned back around and before I know it, he's talking to me again. And I turned around and it's just small talk. And then I sort of, it, you know, I eased my way back around because he was really pretty much right up in my face too. And I'm trying to get away from him, mainly because of social distancing and he didn't have a mask on and I did. But, and I understand about why I should wear a mask for him, but anyway, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm getting almost up to where it's going to be my turn. I think there's one person in front of me. And it, the thought occurred to me, this guy is flirting with me. And I didn't have my rings on. I didn't have any jewelry on. He was flirting with me. He was an older gentleman. And I thought, oh my gosh, what do I do? And I should have said something about the line being so long and then being so slow that my husband was waiting for me. I guess that's probably what I should have done, but I didn't. And, but I was just really trying to ignore him as best I could, but I thought that's so funny. I was single for 35 years. Been married over 10. I'd forgotten what it was like for somebody. I'm, Jim's all, always with me at 90% of the time he's with me so I thought I'd forgotten what it was like for a man to flirt with me so I guess I should be flattered today so I can wear regular lipstick I don't have to have a mask on Jim's playing golf so all right let's see I don't know but I think my cheeks look a little rosy I'm also trying to use up setting sprays and this is, I'm almost out of this too, so that's good. Anytime I wear a powder foundation, I always really use a lot of this or, or a lot of setting spray. It sort of helps. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Jim booked us a cruise. We um, we decided that we felt like we wanted to cruise, and uh, he talked to the person that he always talks to when we're booking cruises that works for, not really a travel agent, but... Let me reach my brush here. Whoa. Not really a travel agent. Well, I'm dropping everything. But she said that she works only with cruise lines. And she said that and since COVID had started easing up a bit and people were cruising, that I, I want to say something like, and I, don't hold me to this, but something like 50,000 um, 
passengers who had cruised recently, there had there's only been maybe four or five documented cases of COVID. Of course, cruise lines were so, if you've cruised, you know, even before COVID, they're, they're you know, they've got hand sanitizer everywhere. They're pretty, pretty uh, careful about that. Hold on. Hold on. I want to tell you about something else really quick that just occurred to me. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I have tons of new growth. I mean, a lot. I uh, all around my hairline. It's, I probably have it other in my hair too. But about I don't know a year or so ago. I, I don't know if I mentioned it in a video, but I I noticed my hair thinning. And I have pretty thick hair, but I had noticed that it was thinning and I started researching, trying to find something to do. And I, I don't even know the video that I saw this on, but it was someone who recommended this shampoo. And they were just, you know, they were just talking about how much their hair had grown. This was the only shampoo they used. They got it on Amazon. And so I ordered it. I mean, I was sold on it. It's called Restore and Strengthen Hair Loss Prevention Therapy Shampoo for Men and Women. No parabens, no SLS, no harmful chemicals. It's sulfate-free. It's by Pure Body Naturals. And this is, I, I, this is my second one that I've used. It's 16 fluid ounces, and it's not that expensive at all. As I said, it came from Amazon. You use whatever hair conditioner you want to with it. I, they may have had a hair conditioner too, I don't know. But I have been using this to wash my hair with, and I am getting all kinds of new growth. All these, and I just really noticed them the other day. They're about an inch long, maybe a little longer. So, I'll, I will definitely list this also. So anyway, we're going to cruise. We are in the, after the first of the year, uh, Jim booked a 10 day Caribbean cruise. And I have, uh, I think we're going to cruise, well I know we are going to cruise out of Fort Lauderdale. So we are starting to get really excited about that. I went ahead and got Biscuit booked. Uh, at the boarding place where we've left him the last couple of times we've traveled to go see the kids recently. So it's really working out well for us there. So, and he seems to really like it. So he's booked, we're cruising, we hope. Of course, you never know, any number of things can happen, but we have talked about it and we've decided that, you know, if it's safe, if we feel safe, we're fully vaccinated, both of us. And should there be another booster, and now you, we're sort of hearing a little bit about that, I can promise you we'll have that too. And we don't want to talk about booster shots. That's not what this is about, So, or vaccinations, period. So if you're against it, that's okay. I respect your right to be against it, but we're not, so we're doing it. But we're fully vaccinated, and, and I think... Uh, before you can even get on a cruise ship now, you have to be fully vaccinated and maybe even have a COVID test. I'm not really sure about that, but if we need one, we'll do that too. So we decided that we're gonna, we are going to start traveling. Uh, I'm 78, I'm a year older than Jim, he's 77. We're in good health. We have no physical disabilities that would keep us from doing anything. So we are, as soon as it's, we really feel good about it, we're going to go to Europe again. And excited about that, real excited. So okay, I'm looking down at my list and I think that's it. This is how I'm going about my day today. I got on a little sweatshirt that I think I got at, it's a thin sweatshirt that I think I got at 
uh, TJ Maxx, and I've probably shown this at a haul before, so I'm wearing that, and that's it. I want to thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you so much more than you'll ever know. I, mm. Thank you for being my friends. Thank you. So go out and uh, be kind today. Be kind to yourself first, but be kind, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.